today I'm going to share two things with you. Um, I always buy my little songbooks with musical songbooks from secondhand stores or yard sales because usually they're in good condition um, and the batteries have just gone out and people don't want to spend the money on the batteries thinking it's more than buying a new book. But in all reality, it can be very inexpensive to replace the batteries and very easy to replace the batteries in these. Basically, on the back, there's a screw or on the sides, more of them and more of them are like this, but the older ones, if they had them on the bottom or on the back, you'd have to unscrew them. And then basically you just slide them out. That's why I had it out, because I just have one hand, but you slide it out, and I am right-handed, so let's try this. So you slide it out, and then these screwdriver sets you can purchase at a, the dollar store. Um, even at Walmart, they're like $2, $3, maybe in the glass fixing section, but at the dollar store, the set was a um, dollar. So um, I have had it for years, and I use it all the time. I love it because you can spin the top around, and you hold the thing. You can spin the thing around and not have to um, use two hands. Anyway, there's a teeny little screw. You just take the little screw out. Now, for the batteries, how I get them inexpensively is the dollar store has them a blister pack for eight for a dollar. So it costs me, what, less than half a dollar to replace the batteries in this. Um, basically you just pop the battery out using a screwdriver. It's easy when you do it with the hand you're dominant in. Um, and then you just replace them. Sometimes um, the batteries will leak and you'll get a little corrosion in there. Basically I just take a paper towel and um, just make sure that the contacts are cleaned off, wipe it out, and then put a new battery in. You push it in, and I always make sure the batteries work because sometimes you purchase the batteries. Okay, that's annoying. <laughs> How do I get it to stop? Sometimes you purchase the batteries and they are dead. And that happens a lot of times um, when they're going outdated. You'll see one I bought for, let's see, that was 50 cents. Those ones were 25 cents each. Um, this blister pack had way more on the bottom. It had probably four different sizes of batteries for $2 at Ace Hardware. Okay, I won't be pushing another one of those buttons, but at least you know it works. Okay, um, these were at the dollar store. These are at the dollar store. The Sunbeam brand they carry at our local dollar store. But um, I, I just keep my eye out on the clearance racks at the grocery store. These are all bought from grocery stores. Um, I just always check the clearance cart they have at the back of the store or the front of the store for batteries because I always I have a lot of these especially for the holidays I have a Disney Christmas one I have a Snoopy Christmas one and a Winnie the Pooh Christmas one and I like putting them out for the grandkid well I have one grandchild but my kids play with them too but so I put them out on our little book table at Christmas and they enjoy playing with them um and then I have, you know, several different other ones with different songs, church songs, gospel songs, uh, Barney, all the different kinds. So that's how I get the batteries cheap. I watch for them on clearance, and that's how you replace them. It's very simple. And then you just put the screw this little screw back in there and screw it in, and you're done. And that's really quick. The other thing I was going to share is how to fix a book that's kind of ripped and torn. Now, you can't tell, I thought this book was so cute. It was at a second-hand store for 50 cents, and I thought my grandchild would adore this, so I thought it was really cute, so I grabbed it. But two things were wrong with it. On this page, this was actually white. It was ripped off, and this was ripped all the way back to here. I don't know if you can see it, because I've already fixed it, and I didn't think about making the video until after I'd already fixed it. But it was all this was ripped up and kind of curled, here. So I just took a glue stick and I glued it back down. I find that works better than the Elmer's glue because Elmer's glue will drip down the other pages and make them stick to each other. So I use a glue stick and then I just get the bubbles out and smooth it like that. And then I have, I'm a Sharpie fanatic. I have every color and every size, blah, blah, blah. So I go through my Sharpies and I get the colors that I think my, most will be most close to the page I want to repair. And I then I just color it in, and and oftentimes on these smaller ones you can fill it in and then slide your finger over it and get it to come off and look a little bit more not so dramatic. But um, let me show you on the brown. I have a brown here, so so if you can see, I just take the brown and I fill it in, and then I just smooth my finger over it. 
And hopefully you can see that. I'm just filling in where it's brown. And you can do this with any color. This is why I love Sharpies. I did this on my trailer, on the side of my Nomad trailer. And you can see any of these blogs. Just type in Sharpie. My blog is thesecretisgratitude.com. And if you go to the bottom of the home page and you type in uh, Sharpie, up will come all of these different uses for Sharpie. I do this on my black furniture as well. I can I always do this with my black chairs on my dining set because the girls wear bling pants and the bling pants so you can actually make it meld in. There's a little those are a little bit lighter but when I smooth it with my finger you can see it, it melds in a little bit better. So um when I have my my girls wear their bling pants they scrape the black paint off of the chair so I just go in and fill it up. Okay so now I get the color that's most like the apple and then I just smooth it in. And you can see that you wouldn't even know that I repaired that page. So sometimes if there's a really cute or an expensive book that I like or I think one of my kids will like, I'll just get it and do some minor repairs and nobody will know the difference. So now, you know, that's, that's if somebody was flipping through the page, they would just think those were highlights. They wouldn't even know that that page had any kind of scrape or anything on it. Let's see if there's another page that needs it. Um, so that's one thing that I do. Also, if there's a sticky thing on the page, so there's some more we could fill in. So when it has texture like that, I kind of try and follow the texture. I don't fill in the whole thing. I would get a lighter brown and I would fill in some of the lighter brown um, textures um, on so that I'm, it, there's texture. I wouldn't fill the whole thing in with brown because you don't want it to be the whole thing brown. You just want the it to be lined textures. So that's one way that you can do line textures is by doing, um, don't fill in the whole thing. Just do it like that and then there's a little bit of texture. And there's a little bit more on that page. It must have been something sticky there. So, um, so there's that anyway. Um, and I don't know that anybody would even know that difference either. Okay, then also sometimes when they put a price tag on a, on a book, this back here is sticky. It's, you can see it's picking up the color off my finger and it's picking up. And it was even worse than it had paper on it before. And what I use for that is, this is mineral spirits. <laughs> you can't see, I put, do not eat kerosene. I, I put it in a little little bottle because I buy it by the gallon, but I don't want it have to go dig it out of the garage every time because I use this all the time on different things because it takes sticky stuff off. So basically I just take a paper towel and I get it a little bit. Don't put too much because you don't want it to saturate the page. But you can see it just quickly and easily takes that sticky off the price tag and any dirt <laughs> that's on there and you can see it's not sticky anymore. There's a little bit over here I didn't get. So that is a way that you can repair a used book and make it look newer. Um, it's I, like I wouldn't go spend twenty dollars on this at a bookstore. I don't even get it. I'm in a small town. I wouldn't even have this at a bookstore here. But and it might be out of print. It might be something that somebody's had for a long time. But I would pay fifty cents for it and then spend you know five minutes, maybe less. I didn't spend five minutes on it um, at all. But maybe two minutes tops fixing those things and then um, if I've glued something I use an elastic and it, actually if I'm storing it too to give as a gift I will put an elastic around it to hold it down and just noticing right here I will probably get a little bit of green sharpie and just color in the, the edges of the book so that it looks less worn on the edges um, and then it's good to go. I'm, I, they don't care that it's used they're, they're good that way if it's something cute they just appreciate it so um, anyway, hopefully I've shared with you how to revisit your books or ones other people are discarding. You can spruce up and donate to the library or ones you're getting rid of, and that way other people can get some enjoyment out of them as well.